Disney. You done fricked it up! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Angry Gale Show, where I totally repeatedly review movie trailers and get angry at them for the comedy of others. It totally not stolen. Uh, today I was going to just do a different video. I was going to finish up a video I was working on last week. Uh, and then my brother sent me a text saying, hey, the Artemis Fowl trailer's out. You love Artemis Fowl. Why don't you see what it is? <sighs> so now I'm here. And I've watched it. And I have some strong feelings. So Artemis Fowl is a book series for, mm, I want to say middle to high schoolers. Uh, it's not very uh, upper echelon of writing. It's definitely not like a classic. Uh, it's definitely not one of those childhood stories that everybody grows up with. It's one of those, you know, it, it, it was a fan favorite. It was a trend back when I was starting high school. Uh, but for trends that just come and go, uh, like Twilight, uh, this one was so much better. I love Artemis Fowl with all my heart. It definitely, like, I won't say it changed my life or anything, but it definitely was something I had a lot of fun with as a kid. And so when they said they were making a movie, I was like, cool. Um, I don't really get excited for most film adaptations for, you know, pretty fair reasons. Uh, but, you know, Artemis Fowl's an interesting story. It's got a cool take. It's, like, really different in a lot of ways from other stories. And so I was excited to see that on the big screen because even if they got it wrong, you know, at least they, they would have the basics of, a, of an Artemis Fowl story in it, right? <laughs> right? No. It's just... I'm gonna go through this trailer and I'm gonna talk through some things that I am feeling right now. Because this is just a mess. This is just a mess. I hate it. I hate this mess. So like, first of all, we start here with, uh, you know, we got some, we got some dialogue and, and I'm going to keep the music off for copyright purposes, obviously. Uh, but then we have this guy um, talking about, you know, how, Oh, you're not you're not supposed to be scared of the dad. You're supposed to be scared of the son, Artemis Fowl. This is a good start, you know. That is, in fact, um, you know, the point of the books is that it's the kid who's actually a mastermind. So they're going through, and they're like, "Oh, let me show you this beautiful you know, him," and it's and his dad, who, um, yeah, that's his dad. An interesting thing about these books, okay, um, if you don't know, spoilers for the book series, which is not going to spoil the movie at all, I promise you, um, is that Artemis Fowl is the genius son of, like, this criminal dad, uh, and, you know, a, a mom, as most kids are, um, and... At the beginning of book one, his dad has been missing for a while, if I remember correctly. I'm going through like seven years, <laughs> oh gosh, a lot of years back to, to my high school days for this knowledge. Uh, but yeah, he go. his dad's gone and missing and his mom gets really sick and no one's able to like cure her. That's, that's the big... Uh, you know, inciting incident that causes Artemis Fowl to do anything he's about to do in the book. So the first interesting take this movie has is that his father's like actively in his life seemingly at the beginning and this story is not about his mom <laughs> who has a horrible disease that is slowly killing her. Um, and I think it also like, like it messes with her like memories like an alzheimer's sort of thing it, it's really sad um but yeah it's going for the dad thing which you know it could work 
Um, the, the, the little, like, okay, the, these, these little effects here, you know, um, with the Disney logo and stuff, that kind of stuff I'm okay with. I, I just want to point out, like, most of my problems with this trailer are actually, like, plot stuff. In terms of, like, how it looks and who's playing who, I don't really have an issue with I don't, I don't have a grudge against any of these guys. I, They clearly have had enough screen time. <laughs> that, okay. That This this brings up a big thing. Screw actors. Who cares about actors? This is an affront to everything. Artemis Fowl is like... Okay, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure from memory Artemis Fowl is an abysmal fighter. The whole point is that he's all brain, no brawn, no skill, like, no kung fu fighting for this kid. It's it's just supposed to be he's really smart, and then he's got a big old butler who is a karate, like, martial arts mixed master P master of all types of fighting. Um, and that's what makes butler cool. Um, and yes, his, his last name is Butler. So he is actually named Butler. <laughs> um, God, I have, like, oh, that's so bad. He is smart. That that part's right. He's super smart. Um, he is like 12. So uh, the kid's fine in terms of age. He, he, you In your head, look, in, in your head, Artemis Fowl is like that anime protagonist. Like the the self wish fulfillment one you know where it's just like super smart always takes you know can figure out everything is, controls all these people who have so many great skills and they all look up to him uh so you kind of picture him older but he is like 12 in the books so i'll give it to him he doesn't look quite right but it is you know canonical uh, this so like I said, in the books, his dad's just gone, uh, and he's not really mentioned in the first book all that much. Later on, you know, they do go on missions to, like, find him, uh, but in the first book, it's about his mother. Uh, in, in this version of events, his dad gets outed as a criminal mastermind. Like, he's just like, oh... He's, he's been found guilty of all these crimes. And like, oh, he's kidnapped. And Artemis has to go save him. And that's, that's the inciting incident. It's not, oh, my mom is like, uh, you know, freaking can't even remember who I am anymore. It's like, oh, my dad's been kidnapped and they're calling me for blackmail. Uh. It, uh. And then, okay, and then instead of Artemis figuring out all this kind of cool stuff, um, he just gets shown it. Okay, let me, let me just tell you why this is awful. Like, in any other movie, it's fine. A kid gets led into a secret world his dad knew all along. That's great. Um, Artemis Fowl is supposed to be a genius. He's supposed to be someone who is so desperate for a cure to something that no, like, human civilization has a cure for. He dives into superstition and, you know, myths that everybody has long since been like, that's just made up, right? And then... He, because he's a genius, figures out the clues to realize, no, this is a real place, and then builds up the coolest, you know, heist book for, you know, 13-year-old me. Uh, <laughs> but it's, like, the idea that he doesn't discover it it's just something his dad's been doing this entire time. That's so... That cuts out half of what makes Artemis Fowl so cool. 
Like, he's supposed to be a genius who figures all this out because he's young enough to believe in fairies, but old and smart enough to actually figure out beyond just the fable what's the truth of the matter. This is just here. Your dad's gone and now we need you to take over for him. So shove all the stuff your dad did at you. You you accomplish nothing. You're not smart enough to figure this out. And the fact that like Butler knows it. Like like no no offense to Butler. He's great. But Butler is supposed to be like definitely make Artemis feel more powerful in the story than a wise mentor. He slowly becomes more of a mentor, but at first Artemis Fowl is supposed to be like cold-hearted. Like his dad's gone, he has no siblings, no real friends, and his mom's like having this horrible thing happen to her. So he's like an a-hole. <laughs> like he's just straight up an a-hole. So this is all just wrong. Everything about what's going on in this scene is is wrong. The fact that they treat it like he's becoming part of Men in Black instead of, you know... I don't... Look, nothing. At this point, they've, they're gone off the rails. This is not anything in the book. For one... The book, 90% of the book, takes place in freaking his own house. <laughs> like, this is not, this is, this is, this is, so he, okay, so, so, this is Mulch Diggins, um, who is a gross, disgusting dwarf creature who digs really well. This is Holly Short, who is supposed to be um, kind of your your typical uh, trying to prove females are, you know, as good as anyone else character. Uh, and I say that with the most love I can. She's great. Uh, but she is, like, she's the first female in her, in the police force uh, of her, you know, in her rank, um, there's only, like, one other female in the whole police force who has, like, a commanding position. But, but Holly is, you know, in a, you know, in a different sector or whatever. And so she faces a lot of prejudice as, like, the first female fairy to do whatever job she's doing. This scene should not be happening. Because these two people literally steal and blackmail these two people. <laughs> like, that's the story. That's the book. Artemis doesn't get help from fairies. Artemis is the antagonist to the fairies. <laughs> he finds them so he can try to steal their gold, which is actually all a ploy to get a wish so that his mom can get better. That's, that's it. That, that's the story. That's, that's the first book. It's Artemis taking from the fairies. The fairies get their police force. They take Mulch Dickens, if I remember correctly, he's like this criminal wanted bad guy. And they bring him in because they need help breaking into this fortress of a house. And of course, Butler is there kicking butt. At, like, the front door. He ain't letting no fairies into his home. They're, they're enemies. They don't like each other. They don't like each other until, like, the third book. <laughs> That's when they finally get, like, a little bit war with each other. They're like, oh, this kid's not totally evil. <laughs> because Artemis is an a-hole. That's what he is. He's a super smart, closed-off a-hole. <laughs> And nothing about any of this trailer is right to any of that. Any of this emotion. Like, they're working together. They're not in the house. Uh, 
you know, they're, they're, he, he's like, oh my gosh, this all exists. Look at these creatures. Dang it, in the books, he's the one who found them. <laughs> it's so wrong. It's just wrong. Mmm. None of this. Ugh. Oh, none of this. None of this is good. None of this. And then, scenes, scenes like this, like I said, Artemis is not a good person in the first book. He's very closed off. For good reason, you know, for a 12-year-old kid. But he's closed off. He doesn't have emotions like normal people until after he gets his mom back. You know, the second, the second book and on. So, like, moments like this where Butler, like, if Butler were to ask Artemis in the first book, like, how you're feeling, Artemis would be like, I don't need freaking feelings. I just need to get the job freaking done. So, this whole, this, this whole thing is just, like, ugh, it's so, it's so not Artemis Fowl. It's just not him and I guess I guess they're kind of at the house uh, his dad's there the, the demon demon gnomes demon goblins I don't remember demon fire breathing goblins from the books maybe they were in there and I just you know got mixed up when they were in the home and had you know a heist movie a heist book it was a heist story oh my god it was a heist story how did they get it so wrong how did they get this so wrong oh mm, mm. okay i've skipped i've skipped back a little bit because there there was something there was one sound bit that i really that that this this trailer really had to hit you with okay so this entire time I've been telling you Artemis is this, like, cold, a-hole, bad a, you know, that, that's, that's, that's what he is. He's, he's just, he kicks butt, but, like, intellectually. So this whole movie, like, or trailer, I guess, this whole trailer, he's been led around by other people. He has just been told all these things that he thought in the books he found out. Um, and he's been helped by the very people he's supposed to be taking from and using. So nothing about him is evil. Nothing about him is uh, surprising for a Disney film. Uh, nothing about him is that criminal mastermind that the the whole point of the books, you know, people who love the books wanted. And then they pull this. I'm the next criminal mastermind. I'm the next criminal mastermind. <laughs> you can't. Look. Look, Disney, I get that you have to be a good role model for all the the kitties and kiddos that you uh you you shill your product out to um but you can't have a kid to be take all of artemis fowl take take everything away from him that makes him a cool character that makes him believable as a criminal mastermind make him into the most plain like yogurt the like greek yogurt of 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 kids okay no flavor just a base basic kid basic kid and then bull no guys he's still a great criminal mastermind it's that's just not how this works you can't you can't make him not evil and not an ale <laughs> But keep, oh, but he's totally a criminal. That's why he cares about his dad. And he wants to save him using the fairies. Ugh. 
you know, after he learns that his dad's a criminal, of course. Because he didn't... From how the, the first bit looked, it, it kind of implies that he didn't know. Maybe he does, and he's just, you know... He just sucks, but, you know, that's entirely plausible. But, just... I didn't breathe my and then... And then there's a troll, and he's just like, Oh, a funny quip about trolls eat humans, watch out for the teeth! A lot of my feelings boil down to Artemis Fowl was cool because he was sort of an anti-hero. You didn't like him all the time, but he was fun. So fun. And he was smart. And you wanted to see him be smart. And you kind of wanted to see him succeed just because he was that cool. Like, he exuded coolness. Because of Artemis Fowl, 13-year-old me was like, Hey, the book says Artemis Fowl read War and Peace. So I'm gonna go get War and Peace and I'm gonna read it as a 13-year-old kid. And I did, and I hated it, but I pulled through because Artemis Fowl was so cool, and I wanted to be that cool, so I had to read the same books he did. It was, you know, the logic of a 13-year-old. That is not Artemis Fowl. That is every kid that's been in a movie about you know, Discovery. He's, like, he's from A Wrinkle in Time. He's from Narnia. He's, there's, he's just every basic character that's meant to be you when you're a kid. Going through an adventure and kind of being like, oh, he's, like, got some smarts, but he's not so smart that you can't still feel like you're him. Artemis Fowl in the books and as a character is supposed to be so much more than that. Absolutely nothing about this makes me want to root for this kid. Pretty sure his butler. Butler could save his dad and be done with it. There's nothing in this trailer that makes me think this Artemis Fowl has any qualities that would make me want to watch him save his dad against whatever cultish evil fairies. It's so wrong. It's just so not what the book was. And I hate, like I get it, adaptations should be different. This isn't an adaptation. This is just taking the same characters and making fan fiction about it. Like that's how far this is from how the first book went. And it's not like they skipped to the second or third story. Eon, Owen Colfer, the, the writer of Artemis Fowl, he does a great job at like slowly building Artemis Fowl up. Having him be start off, you know, the cold evil dude and then building him up into a warm and loving, uh, you know, person because he finally finds people who appreciate him and can, you know, befriend him and they go on adventures and then he learns to trust other people. It's it's great. It's a wonderful character arc done really well and believably. This is the opposite of it. It's just it's just so wrong. But I've been going on about this for more than long enough. I hope you enjoyed my uh, rambly analysis of this trailer. Um, leave a comment down below if you've read the books and if you understand how I feel. Or maybe there's something in this trailer that I'm not paying attention to that you think redeems it in some way. If so, tell me in the comments. I'm not sure I will believe you, but I will certainly try <laughs> and I will I don't know if I'm gonna see this movie I might just so I can hate on it later <laughs> but I don't know so that's it for this episode uh this video I'll see you next time Bye bye
Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.